Hello there, I'm Dr. Punendu Roy. I'm a surgeon in Genesis Hospital, Kolkata. Surgery itself is a real challenge these days. On top of its own technicalities, during this COVID period, you have to wear a PPE, N95 mask, face guard shield and with sweats and fogginess inside. And to add to this, there is one more problem. Because there have not been enough blood donation camps being arranged, so there is shortage of blood also. But have you thought about it? What if the patient says, we don't get blood transfusion? Yes, you are correct. Today we are going to talk about a particular community, the Jehovah's Witness, who follow the Bible strictly and they do not take blood transfusion. I'm sure many of you people probably have never heard about this community Jehovah's Witness. You'll also be surprised to know there are approximately about 87 lakhs of Jehovah's Witness around the world and their presence is seen in 240 countries. They believe Jehovah, the Almighty God, is the Father of Jesus Christ and they follow the Bible absolutely strictly in which it has been written thou shall not eat or take blood. In many parts of Asia and other areas people actually do eat congealed blood. While sacrificing the animal they keep the blood in a bowl and when the blood is congealed they make it into rectangular pieces they cook it and they have several derivatives of congealed blood which people actually consume and even today when I see majority of these people even when they have a disease which require blood transfusion their belief is so strong that they will rather die than take blood now how does this faith arise this is the level of submission to certain beliefs which I have, I have always admired. Now I personally feel that everybody has the right to have their freedom of choice. It should not be that people should talk in a different way. It is their faith, their belief and they have congregations and they live in such connected way all over the world. There are two magazines which is in circulation. One is Watchtower and the other is Awake. There are 93 million copies are brought out in 225 languages. The Watchtower comes tri-annually and Awake comes once in four months. And I was amazed at the quality of the printing, the quality of writing. And it is not only about Jehovah's Witness, it's about philosophy of life, spreading friendship, believing that everybody, how harmoniously we can live on earth. My first experience with Jehovah's Witness was in 2005, when a young girl with a complicated biliary tree problem came to me and I had to do the surgery and I was told by the parents, come what may that you cannot give blood. It was difficult at that moment to accept that. And I said, what if I face a situation that the person is bleeding? In that, the parents replied, even then you will not give blood. Then I said, what happens? What about the legal consequence? Then said that you will be protected by our congregations and the belief that no Jehovah's Witness will ever take. So I went into the depth of this. I was surprised at the faith, the trust, the strong belief that they have. Since then from 2005, I have operated many patients of Jehovah's Witness of different types of surgeries but when we come to the situation to believe that if something goes wrong then what happens 
they have always assured me that talk, don't worry, nothing will go wrong. We have full faith in you and in Genesis Hospital. This is just to let you know, Genesis Hospital, where we call it a non-COVID hospital, and we do all the surgeries after doing double COVID tests. Now we are doing repeatedly, starting from cesarean section, and we have also done brain tumor surgery, open gastrointestinal abdominal surgery on tumors. Recently, we operated one Jehovah's Witness patient named Otono Montol. Now, he had a very bad infected gallbladder. And as a routine, we keep doing the all blood tests and also do blood group. And then I realized, what's the point of doing a blood group? Because even if blood is necessary, Otono Montol had already signed the bond that even if I bleed, Nobody will give me blood transfusion. That's the faith that they have. So, I don't know whether people can understand how it is, what goes or how much adrenaline gets pumped into the surgeon's blood circulation, knowing very well that we will not allow any bleeding to take place. But I suppose then the question may be asked that just because you know that there are blood available does that mean the surgeon is not careful that's not true though but you know when a restriction is given that a life depends on this if the patient bleed i can't give blood transmission i suppose one has to be extremely meticulous it's like if i am sent to bat in cricket field and say that if i nick a ball outside the upstamp in an out swinger your life will be in question. Then it's very difficult probably to bat or stand there. But nevertheless, come let's go inside the operation theater and see. I want people to understand that surgery itself is a very challenging thing. Then during COVID time, how we are operating. And here is a situation with the Jehovah's Witness that we can't give blood can't allow bleeding to take place. What we go through. Now we all need a face guard. And with this face guard we have to operate. Inside we start sweating. It becomes foggy. So that's it for protection. We start the operation now. Uh, the problem for Jehovah's Witness, we have to be very careful because we all know that they are not supposed to get blood transfusion, so I will not be allowing any drop of blood also to bleed. Naam ta akbar bolo. Atono mandol. Acha, ठीक है. अब ये तो Jehovah's Witness तो. Yes. Okay. the ports
and yes, the surgery went successful. This is also to let you know, all the operations that we have done in Jehovah's Witness in Genesis Hospital, all of them went successfully. Nobody required even blood transfusion. But there are sufficient material available which the congregation supplied us. What are the blood alternatives? How else can we build up by before the surgery if a person's hemoglobin has to be built up? And if you are careful, how we can avoid by volume expanders, plasma expanders like Dextran and other things. Next day I went and I wanted to take an interview for Mr. Dr. Mumbai. Come, let's see what he has got to say. It was so nice to see that he was still smiling and he said that I have complete faith in Jehovah that everything will be done. Dr. yesterday you had a laparoscopic gallbladder surgery. How are you feeling today? Fine, sir, because uh, today in the morning I walked around and I didn't feel too much pain, but slightly as it is. Very good, yeah. very good. And it looks like your lunch has also arrived and they are giving you normal lunch with rice, dal and everything. Uh, so science has progressed so much that you had a surgery yesterday, today you walked around having full meal. Uh, I just came to know that you follow a faith called Jehovah's Witness. Yes. Now, I read up and learnt because many years back, I had the privilege to operate a young girl who was operated once outside and developed a complications and there was very critical state in which I was asked to do the second surgery. It was an open surgery, but I was told by her mother that I am not allowed to give blood. So we had a lot of argument discussion, but I admired that how a mother also had so much strong belief about the belief in Bible, the belief in Jehovah, that whatever happens, even if she bleeds, still no blood should be given. I wanted to know your feelings. If during surgery, if you did bleed from liver, and uh, we see there is bleeding coming from the drain and if I tell you that your life is at risk, you need to give blood and at the moment there is no other blood substitute will work. What will be your reaction? Yes sir, you are uh, absolutely right uh, and also in my case, if uh, there is a risk for life, I can take that, that risk because in the Bible Acts 15, 28, 29, it says that Keep abstain from blood. This is the order from our Creator Jehovah. So that's why we follow it. Even uh, we have to face uh, any consequences because we don't depend upon the present life only. We have a hope of eternal life after resurrection. Uh, in Bible there is written John chapter 5, 28 and 29. Is okay. there, that uh, you will be re resurrected in a new world. Where do you get this much amount of strength that you are ready to give your life and still not take blood? Because the strength is coming, the re resurrection hope. Okay. Resurrection hope is the so strong uh, evidence. Even Jesus Christ, he was died, but he was resurrected. He was re resurrected again. And nine, this sort of uh, evidence is there in the Bible, resurrection evidence. So we believe that Jehovah God has the ability to give us life again in the paradise. That's why we gain this sort of strength. Over the period of last 15 years, I have done a lot of research to understand this community. Jehovah's Witness all over the world. Even in England, I have met many Jehovah's Witness people who never operated. In India, all the witness people I have seen, that there is such peace loving people. Each and everybody I met so far, they have always been extremely poised, humble. I have not seen a single person ever reacting rudely. Even when I try to argue with them, that how can you allow that 
that somebody will bleed and we will not give blood. And they always smile and say that this is our belief. This is what is written in Bible and they follow that. Even in many other religions, there are many superstitions, many protocols, there are many things which they are allowed to follow. Whether I agree or don't agree, one good thing about Jehovah's Witness is that they don't harm anybody else. They will never believe in war. That's why a Jehovah's Witness will never join an army in any country. They will never attack or do anything or any harm or indulge in any fight. And this is the reason I felt that this particular community and their belief should be made known to other people that there are such a huge number of people who want to follow they should be left alone. Why should we force anything on them that no you have to follow this and you are not allowed to follow your belief? I, Dr. Punendu Roy, take the pledge that Genesis Hospital and I will be there along with my team of surgeons and gynecologists to be for the people from this faith, Jehovah's Witness, to do bloodless surgery in Genesis Hospital. And I found another thing that many of the Jehovah's Witness people felt very comfortable because of the name Genesis. Genesis is the first book Bible, it means the beginning. So let's try and spread this that here we will start the beginning that all the Jehovah's Witnesses who need any kind of surgical procedure can come to Genesis Hospital. We are there. If you learned something new today about a community which you did not know, please like, share this subscribe to my channel and keep watching such new information on health, education and other interesting things that we come across in our life.